good morning everyone and uh, today our topic is genetic disorders but not just genetic genetic disorders also inborn error of metabolism so uh, we are going to discuss all uh, this one try to finish all these two topics you know in this lecture um, now first of all I'm going to discuss about the genetic disorders and then we will talk about the inborn error of metabolism so uh, to have a good concept of this thing is uh, what is genetic disorders uh, like simply they are what you can say uh, we know uh, what you can say all the information is stored in the genes and uh, whenever like there is any small gene mutation or uh, um, any type of type of chromosomal abnormality or uh, any type of translocation and all these things you know it can lead to um, some structural or functional abnormality so um, one thing which uh, I think all of you should understand is called as you know what is Mendelian inheritance um, now uh, to talk about the Mendelian inheritance I would be showing you um, few of the things for example you know what is autosomal dominant what is autosomal recessive what is aut uh, x-linked dominant or what is x-linked recessive or sorry x-linked recessive uh, uh, you can see that uh, to understand this thing of course the mendelian inheritance uh, like how the things are inherited uh, should be should be known and uh, simply these are the disorders which are caused by mutation of one or uh, mutation of one or both copies of alleles of a gene so uh, it is inherited either in autosomal fashion or x-linked fashion so you can see autosomal means as, uh, as we know like from the chromosomes 1 to 22 um, the chromosomes are present in pairs and uh, we all have the set of sex chromosomes as well for example in the males it is double x is it is xy and in the females it is x x so i am showing you this autosomal dominant inheritance in this way in this one now one easy way to remember uh, what is autosomal dominant and what is autosomal recessive conditions um <laughs> autosomal dominant is the most common mode of mendelian inheritance and uh, remember in the dominant condition we just we just want one uh, defected uh, you can say allele for the disease to be present right so there is no carrier states right there is no carrier states in this one so anyone who will get one defected gene you know they will be affected they will be having the condition so you can see over here when any parent is affected so there is 50% chances that the siblings or sorry the babies or the children will be affected and 50% chances like they will be normal and there is no carrier thing or you can also say like there is uh, heterozygote you know heterozygous forms can will display the features of the condition see there is heterozygous like this one have this one and this one don't have so they have like heterozygous they are heterozygous so but the important thing which I want to tell you in this one is if you will pay attention and when you would know like what these conditions look like for example achondroplasia or Ehler Donald syndrome or uh, Huntington disease or Marfan syndrome or myotonic dystrophy uh, neurofibromatosis and all these things you know or osteogenesis imperfecta uh, almost almost most of the autosomal dominant conditions you know they are some structural type of defects tuberous you know it's a structural type of defect 
polyposis coli, there is a lot of polyps. A structure is abnormal. Autosclerosis, in which the foot plate of the stapes get uh, attached with the window. So it's a structural type of defect. Osteogenesis imperfecta, structural type of defect. Neurofibromatosis, there are many neurofibromas, structural type of defects. So most of autosomal dominant conditions, you know, they are structural type of defects. Uh, on the other hand, if you will see autosomal recessive, now in this one, we know uh, like uh, uh, until and unless, you know, both of the parents will be affected, uh, of course, like uh, are the carrier, for example, this parent and this is the mother. So uh, what will happen like uh, there is just 25% chances that uh, siblings like the offsprings will be affected, right? So, and 50% chances like they will be carrier states and 25% chances they will, they will be normal. So, uh, simply, uh, we uh, like the individual should be homozygous like in this case for the abnormal gene. So, it should be present on both of the sets of the chromosome so that, you know, they will display the features of that condition. Now, you know, uh, one thing is cousin marriages, you know, they say like cousin marriages are not good. Why? Because um, on an average, you know, many of us, we we had a lot of abnormal genes in our uh, body. Like almost everyone, they had some abnormal genes in their body. So uh, what they say, like uh, when everyone carries six to eight abnormal recessive genes. So, of course, I am normal or you are normal and or like... Uh, like but when someone you know families who keep on doing cousin marriages so of course like in the families like they are ha they are carrying the recessive genes for particular disease and uh, due to cousin marriages you know uh, they can cause condition in the off offsprings okay uh, remember in there is a carrier state in this one so uh, if you will pay attention on the autosomal recessive conditions you will found, found like most of these are basically enzymatic type of disorders for example uh, or you can say uh, most of these condition basically gives uh, um, uh, you can say some enzyme deficiencies or metabolic type of disorders you know inborn error of metabolism for example congenital adrenal hyperplasia now what is this one uh, they, they do have some structure abnormality but see just one enzyme is missing like in most of the time you know it's 70 hydroxy we had done this thing in pediatrics already cystic fibrosis is again a small type of deficiency or abnormality in the channel uh, frederick ataxia or galactosemia uh, we will study this one and you will know there is just one enzyme which is deficient so all of them phenylketonuria and all this one you know there is one very minor type of enzyme type of deficient so uh, you can say like autosomal recessive conditions because there are they they have like some enzyme deficiencies or things like this so most of them they affect the meta metabolic pathways and that, that's why you know they they had this kind of condition so uh, now uh, one of the uh, what you can say mendelian inheritance can be seen in this one x-linked uh, recessive form so of course like it is x linked so just the father can be the carrier okay in this case like uh, sorry uh, just the mother can be carrier and uh, uh, of course like if uh, a male will get one gene so the other one is y so they will be the affected one so uh, remember like in x linked recessive conditions uh, uh, the females will be carriers and the whenever there is abnormal gene will go to the uh, male offspring so they will be affected so you can see like color blindness duchenne and becker's muscular dystrophies we had done this thing fragile x syndrome i will talk about that one g6 p deficiency and things like this so this is like all mendelian inheritance things you know uh, what you can say which we uh, which we know um, many of the times you know you can say like the inheritance is multifactorial or we call it as complex inheritance or polygenic uh, or complex inheritance you can see um, like uh, you can say like these are basically um, um, random mutations or things like this okay uh, random mutations or translocations or all these things you know they can cause uh, we call it as multifactorial simply because we don't found any 
inherited pattern rather there is a sporadic case a sporadic means like out of nowhere no family history nothing and um, a patient have this thing uh, for example uh, trauma okay um, what you can say uh, like in that one you know you are not going to see any anyone who have what you can say uh, affected in the family okay uh, for example in, in the adult life someone is getting diabetes mellitus type 2 hypertension malignancies atherosclerosis in the childhood atopy in the congenital like congenitally neural tube defects or cleft lip and palate so uh, this is like in, in which we don't see any type of patterns like uh, x-linked or uh, autosomal dominant or recessive rather they can be present uh, what you can say as a sporadic case as you can say right so uh, multifactorial polygenic or complex inheritance we see in these kind of conditions right um, other than that uh, 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 what we can do is uh, then there is something called as triplet repeat expansions you know um, if you remember there is a condition called as uh, um, myotonic dystrophica in neurology if you 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 attend like saw that lecture of myotonic dystrophica what is that that is a triplet uh, repeat uh, expansion okay like uh, uh, you know like all our genes uh, are made up of what this trinucleotide repeats are there right so there are what you can say the normal limit for each tri triplet repeats but when those, those repeats are too much uh, overexpressed or coming back again and again and again so they can give rise to certain conditions like fragile x syndrome or huntington disease and things like this so one of the thing is called as mitochondrial uh, inheritance as well uh, anyhow uh, you can see over here structural abnormalities can be there like deletion inversions ring chromosome duplication translocation so what is deletion see there is a deleted genetic material right so uh, this thing and interstitial like within and terminal like at the end if there is deletion or something then there is inversion you can see like normally it's like this and see it is inverted okay so then there is a ring chromosome in which there is fusion uh, then there is duplication like this one is duplicated right um, then there could be translocation see um, this one is translocated over here and this one comes here so see it's an example of a balanced translocation okay so just saying this is the example of Robertsonian translocation. So see, um, this is like they are showing you the genes and there is a breakpoint over here and see how it is translocated. Like it's, you can say, an unbalanced type of translocation. Uh, see, one is very small and one is so big, right? So there's a fragment which is left of one of the chromosome, right? It is called as Robertsonian translocation. Then there is isochromosome. So, like normally, it should be, uh, it should divide uh, what you can say uh, longitudinally, but see what's going on. Transverse division is there, so you can see the end result. So, of course, like I'm just giving you guys um, the information. Uh, rather, you know, we have to discuss what you can say. Um, Down syndrome so what I want to show you is like inheritance of the Down syndrome right so you can see like inheritance of Crown syndrome uh, you will see in this one they, are, they will talk about again about the same thing which I will show you that is called as Robertsonian <coughs> translocation uh, 
So inheritance of Down syndrome could be due to non-disjunction. So what's going on, you can see that the parent uh, is there and see there are two chromosomes like the 21 and this one is there. So what happens is like uh, when the gametes are formed, so these are normal, but here there is non-disjunction. So simply uh, one didn't get anything when the one get two. So when these two will fuse together, so what will happen? The offspring will be carrying three chromosomes at the place 21. So that's why it is also called as trisomy 21. Or it could be a Robertsonian trans uh, translocation. You can see, like, of course, like this is the translocation carrier. Someone you can see here, uh, 21, 14 and 14 and 21. So there is fragment which is left over here and this is the normal one. So when normally it is going to make gametes, you can see they get the normal genetic material. But when it is going to make the, uh, what you can say, uh, make the gametes, so see, there could be number of positions. So if, for example, someone get um, this one with this one, so normal. Someone who get um, this one with, uh, you can say, uh, someone who get, someone who get this one and this one is normal. Someone who get this one and this one, you can see. So it's a translocation carrier, same like him. Okay, so this one and this one is same. Someone who get this one and this one, so the result will be over here. Okay, so it is like trisomy 14. They are not viable. And someone who get this one with this one, so monosomy 14, not viable. Um, again, someone who get this one with uh, this one, so sorry, this one, so it is, it could be monosomy 21, it is not viable. And someone who get basically this one with this one, so they, they, are, they are carrying the translocation one. And this is again the Down syndrome. So like this thing, is, uh, this thing occurred. So basically, uh, uh, Down syndrome, it, it is also called as trisomy 21, right? So again, I, like they are showing you the same thing. And why it is called as trisomy 21? Because it is it occurs at the chromosome number 21. And uh, for example, if anyone uh, who get this uh, trisomy at chrom chromosome number 18, we call it as Edward syndrome. Uh, if someone who get it at the chromosome number 13, we call it as Patau syndrome. So, uh, I think like all of you know what is the meaning of syndrome, by the way, uh, because uh, uh, like uh, basically we call syndrome uh, to a pattern of uh, um, anomalies that occur together, okay, and they are caused by a single defect or a single known or unknown defect, you can say. So why Down syndrome is called as a syndrome? Because we know that the single defect which causes all those spectrum of anomalies is basically trisomy 21. So that's why Down syndrome is called as a syndrome. Uh, genetic anomalies in general could be a major anomaly or could be a minor anomaly. For example, uh, a minor anomaly is basically um, um, you can say someone who have, you know, one extra thumb and nothing else. But a major anomaly basically is something which uh, uh, is causing significant effect on the life or uh, life or the functioning of the patient. For example, there is a, a cardiovascular anomaly with CNS anomaly, things like this. And there are different uh, terms, you know, which we used uh, used to describe what you can say. Uh, these things like uh, there is something called as malformation. Okay, there is something called as deformation. Uh, so simply malformation is abnormal development process. Okay, or you can say it is the result of abnormal development process. Again, uh, an extra thumb or extra finger is a core is something called as Mal malformation, right? So uh, you can say deformation is the, it's not like something extra, rather it is something which is deformed or which is not formed properly. And there is something called as dysplasia as well, when the cells are not, you can say, arranged normally. Uh, for example, bone dysplasia or 
um, esophageal dysplasia. So, of course, like the cells which are arranged in some fashion, now they are not arranged in that fashion. So, uh, this thing. In genetic conditions, we are going to, you are going to cover, of course, I, I cannot cover all those, all the conditions like what is vectoral association, uh, what is Patau, what is Angelman, what is all these things, you know, we cannot cover all these things. Uh, I will cover Down syndrome, I will try to talk about other syndromes as well. But what we say, we call some of the things as syndrome, like, like Down syndrome, in which like we know that there is some pattern of anomalies that occur together due to some known or unknown um, cause. Um, then there is something called as association. For example, um, association is a, a non-random um, appearance or occurrence of multiple independent anomalies. Uh, for example, one thing is called as vectoral association. V-A-C-T-E-R-A-L. Now, V is for vertebral dysgenesis. A is for anal atresia. Uh, C is for cardiac anomalies, T, E is for tracheoesophageal fistula, R is for renal anomalies and L is for limb anomalies. So and now these things are associated together. So we call it as vectoral association. So uh, what happens uh, basically is um, anyone who have any type of chromosomal abnormality or genetic abnormality, no matter it is what, you know, it could lead to some structural or functional abnormality. Uh, you can see over here, like they are talking about the cry to chat syndrome. So uh, why it is called as cry to chat? Because the baby, when they cry, you know, it sounds like, like a cat. So it's an autosomal deletion caused by a partial deletion at chromosome number five, okay? And see, 90% of the cases is not hereditary. So you can say it have it's a sporadic type of condition, right? Or uh, you can see, okay, so here, see, they, cat, they cry like a cat. They have some facial abnormalities. Uh, they have behavior problem. They have white space things. Uh, okay, now what is Down syndrome? Drows, Down syndrome is trisomy 21, okay? They look like this. Uh, you can see over here. Okay, uh, to talk about this thing, you know, uh, maybe I, I will forget to talk about like what they are showing you over here. Whenever we suspect any genetic disease or we go for genetic testing, there are number of uh, different types of ge ge um, genetic testings available. Uh, for example, uh, one thing is called as micro um, array and microarray analysis okay so this is like again one of one of the type of the genetic testing so as the name shows microarray analysis so um micro and micro array analysis is used to identify small deletions or duplications of genetic material okay so most of the time, you know, for example, you can see over here, it's a partial deletion of chromosome number five. So we can go for micro error analysis in this case, right? Uh, for example, if you, are a, you have a patient and uh, they have some developmental delay going on or they have one or more major malformations which are going on, you, you couldn't reach, okay? You're suspecting that, you know, it seems like that they, they, they lost some, a small part of genetic material, so we will go for microarray analysis then there is something called as f i s h fish okay uh, now uh, <coughs> uh, to talk about fish by the way um, this one is to check uh, like a small gain or small uh, deletion of the genetic material uh, what is FISH? It is basically fluorescence in situ hybridization. Okay, fluorescence in situ hybridization. So uh, you can say this is to um, catch very small gain or loss of chromosomal material. Okay, then there is something called as karyotyping. Karyotyping or karyotype. 
Now, what is stereotyping? This is again the analysis of all the 46 chromosomes. Okay, so what you see here, or what you see here, they are analyzing all the 46 chromosomes and what they can found here on chromosome number 21 that they carry three chromosomes at chromosome number 21 and down syndrome is what down syndrome is trisomy 21 so basically you know how we catch these patients is simply uh, whenever we whenever we examine any newborn you know uh, of course like uh, uh, we take their weight we take their head circumference we take their length uh, we take their vitals and then we examine them from head to toe so for example when you are founding some structural abnormality while examining them now what kind of structural abnormality for example you found that you know a newborn baby have uh, cataracts a newborn baby have uh, um, spinal problem a newborn baby have uh, um, some uh, typical face typical look on the face uh, okay as we're discussing down syndrome I, I will tell you for example you found that the baby have a single palmar crease with flat occiput and white palpebral fissure so now and upward slanted eyes for example now you know that these are the features of what these are the features of down syndrome so once we are uh, thinking that you know this could be down syndrome we will send the baby for karyotyping and when they will give us this result we can say okay the patient have down syndrome so, you know, like as Down syndrome is uh, linked with the increasing maternal age, like as the mother ages, you know, they have increased chances of developing Down syndrome or giving birth to the baby who have Down syndrome. So, like simply, I'm giving the example of Down syndrome, but what I wanted to put in your mind is like uh, how we approach a baby or child with some dysmorphic features. So, we go for all the history, uh, prenatal, uh, perinatal uh, history as well as what you can say uh, we can go and draw a family chart and uh, uh, we can mention like if we can ask them if in the families they have like any kind of condition running so we can plot on that just to see like if there is any uh, uh, what you can say uh, things running in their family and if we found anything then we see, try to understand like if it is autosomal recessive, if it is autosomal dominant, if it is X-linked recessive or for example, if it is um, a sporadic or you can say out of nowhere type of condition. We ask for cousin marriages and of course we then send the patient for investigations like torch infection screening, x-rays, karyotyping, chromosome, uh, micro uh, array analysis or uh, fish. Uh, so on and so forth right so uh, to, to talk more about down syndrome uh, this is like the history uh, like how they uh, found this one right um, okay uh, basically I, I would like to show you just one uh, you can say um, Uh, actually, I'm 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 I, I try to wind up all the topic of Down syndrome, you know, uh, quickly in one one of this uh, uh, photograph, right? Uh, taken from the book, pediatrics book. Okay, as the mother ages, especially after thirty five years of age, you know, the incidence of Down syndrome increases too much. So uh, you can found this one. A very helpful type of diagram so this is a risk of down syndrome in live births in percentage and this is the maternal age and now you can see over here uh, until 30 years of age the risk of having a down syndrome baby is basically 
less than 0.1%. But as you can see, like after 30, especially after 35, the graph is going up like this. And by 45, like just before 45 years of age, you can say the chances increases or reaches up to 3.5%. Basically, the incidence is 1 in 600 to 800 births. And why Down syndrome is important because it is the most common abnormality of autosomal chromosomes. One way to remember this, this chart is what like uh, at age 20, the females have 1 in 1500 chances. Okay. But by the age 45, the chances in 1 in 20. What it means that 1,500 women who are giving birth at the age of 20, there is there could be one Down syndrome baby, but at, 40, at age 45, if 20 women are giving birth to babies, live births, so one of the baby may will be having what Down syndrome. Okay. Now the clinical features, how they look like. Now, basically, they have flat occiput, not shown over here. Maybe I can find. In this slide, there is a lot of babies with Down syndrome. Okay, both adults and the babies. But, uh, okay. Simply, they have flat occiput. They have a round face, okay. They have upward slanting eyes, okay. They have brush field spots in their iris, okay. In their iris, they have some speckled iris. When you will found, you can see the spots. Those spots are called as brush field spots. They have higher chances of getting cataracts. They have nystagmus. They have low set ear. The ears are low set. And uh, they have large cheeks with protruding tongue, low flat nasal bridge and small nose. Their height is not so big, like they are short stretched. Their joints are hyper flexible. And many of them, okay, so you can see now here, this is the typical craniofacial appearance written over here. There could be other anomalies like short neck, single palmar crease, they are showing you here. Okay. Um, sandal gap. What is sandal gap? You know, when we wear sandals, so there is something which fix here. So basically, the first and the second toe have increased distance. That is called as sandal gap. Now, you know, the important thing about this one. See, when we see a baby of Down syndrome, we must know the associations. All these things which are the features which are written over here is the things which you can see. But these babies who are born with Down syndrome, many of them they have cardiovascular abnormalities like atrioventricular septal defect. Many of them they have duodenal atresia. They may have anal atresia. They may have Hirschsprung disease. Okay, so. Uh, now, if we, all things are written over here, if we know these associations, of course we have to, we will do further investigation, we will do x-ray, we will do ultrasound, we will do echocardiography to find these things. And many of these patients, they have late findings. What happens is, they have increased ch chances of having Alzheimer's, dementia in their lifetime. They have delayed motor milestones. They have learning difficulties. They have short stature. They have increased susceptibility to infections. They have hearing impairment. They have visual impairment from cataracts and myopia. They have increased risk of leukemia. Okay. Now, they have increased risk of hypothyroidism and celiac disease. They have increased risk of epilepsy. They have increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. Now, guys, see. Because we know all these things now by our knowledge, you know, nowadays, 
the lifespan of the babies with uh, down syndrome is very 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 good why because they we like right after birth if there is a diagnosis of down syndrome is done what they do they check for all these things and later on these babies you know they will send to the to the special schools for um special classes you can say and uh, uh they keep on doing their cbcs to catch for leukemias they keep on doing their echoes for to look for any cardiac abnormalities they keep on doing yearly thyroid function tends to check for any hypothyroidism they are developing they will keep on doing x-rays of their neck because they have atlanto axial dislocate um, instability um, they keep on doing hearing tests to check for their hearing and so on and so forth and they keep on checking their eyes so see uh, they like nowadays the care is provided very good and that's the reason uh, nowadays the prognosis of down syndrome is very good you will found them in the in 50s even so of course we cannot fix any congenital or ge genetic or chromosomal abnormalities so uh, that's all uh, by the way like rest uh, many things are in this slide i will i will just scroll it scroll it down if there is anything important i, I would uh, tell you okay regarding mental retardation guys they do have low iq level but um by special techniques in developed world they they fit well in society so uh, their iq is around 50 to 70 okay uh, most most of the time uh, but they more may have like so they, most of them they have mild impairment but many of them they have moderate impairment as well and i, I told you that most of them they have delayed uh, what you can say milestones so speech delay fine motor skills delay cross delay all these things can be there so uh, this is all the facial features you can see over here small ears uh, stomatology by the way if you want if you are interested you can go through it uh, see uh, yes they have increased chance of umbilical hernia as well a lot of photographs of down syndrome a lot of images of down syndrome they may have mucous edema so they have single palmar crease it is also called as uh, this crease uh, uh, Simon Simon trees Simon trees okay this one have Simon trees uh, okay um, so now okay uh, actually I I don't I, I cannot go in so much details why because it, this one is like the same thing I told you the sandal gap thing um, now guys like uh, the important thing over here uh, what I wanted to talk about is uh, um, wait okay wait uh, I will tell you now down syndrome and maternal age leave this thing this is okay um, okay, so the treatment I already told you, right? There is no specific treatment and uh, all is symptomatic. If there is heart defects, treat that. Regular checkups, special education, and monitor eye problems, monitor lymphocytic, leukemia, and the prognosis is very, very, very good. Okay, uh, before like going to uh, uh, ending this topic, you know, I want to tell you something that uh, nowadays uh, during pregnancy, uh, the females are offered with Down syndrome screening at the end of first trimester. So uh, nowadays, like what they do is like uh, they um, they just check at the end of first trimester if the baby have any chromosomal abnormality, especially Down syndrome. It is called as Down syndrome screening. If someone have is found with like screen positive for Down syndrome, then they can ask the patient that okay. Uh, the person like if they want to abort or whatever like they like right because there are many uh, or what you can say um, it's not so simple like there are many different beliefs about uh, 
this thing abortion and stuff like this so but like that can be offered right uh, one of the things you know uh, I told you that uh, there is something called as Edward syndrome and Patau syndrome uh, so it, Edward syndrome is like trisomy 18 and Patau syndrome is basically um, trisomy 13 so this is the clinical features of Edward syndrome these are the clinical features of Patau syndrome uh, not so important Edward syndrome um, is like uh, uh, one in 6,000 births and uh, Patau is one in 10,000 live births so you can say like uh, uh, the 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 incidence is so much less right but you can see like here low birth weight prominent occiput small mouth and chin short sternum fixed overlapping fingers here you can see the fixed overlapping fingers rocker bottom feet like their feet are like from the down it's like rocker bottom so uh, the important thing I would tell you about uh, uh, Edward syndrome especially you know so Edward and Patau syndrome especially is simply the prognosis is not so good um, like uh, in Edward syndrome there is like around 10% of the patients you know uh, who survive until 10 years of age and regarding Patau uh, the important thing is like you know uh, again the survival is not good so most of the people most of the babies you know they die very young very 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 young so that's the reason like you know you are not going to find these patients uh, usually uh, because like they die, they die so early uh, other than that you know um, uh, you can say uh, there are like uh, I can I, I want to give you one example for the um, X-linked disorder for example I can uh, talk about something called as fragile X syndrome uh, now fragile X syndrome you know it's an X-linked type of disorder and uh, uh, what happens in the this one is like basically there is trinucleotide repeat expansion it is CGG on the X chromosome so it's X-linked condition in which there is uh, trinucleotide repeat on the X chromosome. So now, uh, again, the, the most important one is Down syndrome because like this, the, the incidence of this one is not like Down syndrome, rather one in 3,500 uh, males or one in 6,000 females, they may have this thing. So uh, how uh, this a fragile X syndrome is present presents with is um, when we look them they have characteristic faces faces like they have a prominent jaw uh, you can see that like the long face uh, large everted ears prominent mandible and broad forehead most evident in affected adults and uh, uh, what happens like when they become when they reach puberty you know um, their testes become um, enlarged okay too much enlarged so like that's what is ready you know macro orchidism so post pubertal you know their test has become so much enlarged and uh, uh, what happens like uh, uh, this is the importance of this one why I'm talking about fragile X, fragile X syndrome is this is the most common you can say inherited cause of intellectual disability in boys okay it is the most common cause of intellectual disability in boys so they have like uh, seizures microphone prolapse as complications and joint laxity or you can say like a hyper um, extendable joints scoliosis and autism hyperactivity things like this uh, the thing here is uh, 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 you can say like you know the prognosis of this condition is uh, um, quite good because uh, they do uh, uh, live uh, longer right so this is like one of the thing and so uh, one of the thing is uh, Turner syndrome which you are going to hear again and again so uh, what is Turner syndrome now again it's a you can say the x link chromosome type of abnormality or you can say sex chromosome disorder so what happens in these uh, tender syndrome remember it's always 
girls and this is the most common genetic makeup they have like they are have missing one x chromosome or they have 40 x 45 x okay so they have 45 x it should be double x so this is the most common type of uh, abnormality they have uh, now you can see like uh, the causes of Crittenden syndrome is typically non disjunction okay and due to that non disjunction what happens is like uh, uh, see gamete with 23 chromosomes and this is gamete with 20 chromosomes 22 chromosomes and when they will combine together so this uh, female will be having monosomy missing one x chromosome right so one in four thousand females they may have this thing now you can see over here karyotype for turner syndrome all are normal except nothing here right x is just one Uh, so now how the Turner syndrome babe, uh, patients look like I can show you this one and I can show you one more uh, This one is like when they are born how we can catch them how they look like Okay um, uh, You can see over here mm. They have short stature They have short web neck um, They they have what you can say broad chest widely spaced nipples and they have lymphedema of hands and feet you can see over here lymphedema of the hands and feet uh, one of the thing which you will see over here like their posterior hairline is uh, very low normally it should be like a little higher so also like they have some internal abnormalities as well for example they may have uh, coarctation of iota bicuspid aortic valve renal and cardiovascular abnormalities and things like this so uh, the important thing to talk about here is uh, not the diagnosis rather i will sh i would like to add one slide over here just like because i will give you the this ppt as well so uh, you can see like uh, this is like the turner syndrome patients they are showing you so lymphedema of the hands and feet and spoon shaped nails short stature neck webbing or thick neck uh, widely spaced angle and widely spaced nipples and congenital heart defects, delayed puberty and all these things. Uh, the important thing about Turner syndrome which I wanted to tell you is uh, they have normal life expectancy. They have normal life expectancy. And uh, uh, what happens is um, one of the abnormality they have like is ovarian dysgenesis which means like their ovaries cannot work so simply they they cannot produce the sex hormone which is estrogen right so when they don't have estrogen basically you know estrogen is the one which is uh, which forms all the female sex hormone like uh, organs like the thing uh, like the development of the breast and all this thing so as it, it, their ovaries are not working so they once they will reach puberty what will happen is uh, they are not going to develop the breast so uh, what we do like in managing them we keep on doing their echo to check for any heart defects uh, and uh, near their growth you know because they are short stature so nowadays what they do like they keep on giving them um, growth hormone therapy so that you know they can attain their height and once they have attained their height uh, you can say they started giving them estrogen so when they give them estrogen, so what happens like uh, um, they started developing their secondary sexual characters like the development of breast and all this one. So uh, and they can produce an offspring by in vitro fertilization by donating the ova. Okay, uh, using donated ova. Okay, it's like someone will donate for them. So this thing and... Uh, there is one thing called as Klinefelter syndrome as well. Now, remember, like down uh, as I told you, Turner syndrome is in females, so Klinefelter is in males, and most commonly, like you know, it is like forty-seven XXY. Most commonly, it could be forty-eight XXXY or forty-nine XXXXY, right? But this is the most common presentation, okay? Uh, XXY. So uh, now, Klinefelter syndrome. Um, is quite common if you will compare it with Turner or with other conditions like it can occur in one in uh, one in 1000 
So now, uh, again, it have the same story like Down syndrome, like as the maternal age is, like the maternal age increases, you know, there is increased chances of Klinefelter syndrome. <laughs> now, you know, um, Turner syndrome patients, if you, if you rem can remember the features of Turner syndrome, you can remember the features of Klinefelter syndrome very, very, very easily. Klinefelter syndrome is exactly what is opposite of Turner syndrome. Turner syndrome happens in females, Klinefelter in males. Turner syndrome have monosomy, single X, they, one ha they, they have extra X or more than extra X. They are short, Klinefelter are tall. Turner syndrome, they are broad or fat, Klinefelter are thin and slim. They are overweight, they are underweight. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what happens like pre-puberty, like before the puberty, you like they, they are completely normal. You cannot catch them. But what happens once they reach the puberty, they have developmental delay. Now, because their testes grow at a slower rate than most other, than the other boys, what happens? They have less testosterone. So when they have less testosterone, basically, they have long limbs. They may will develop gynecomastia. They lack the facial hairs. Okay, these are the features of Klein factor syndrome. So, <clears throat> see, X, X, Y. One is extra. And see the karyotyping. Here, it should be X, Y, but they have X, X, Y. So, simply like these are the features, you know. Uh, they have like poor muscle tone and all this stuff. So, uh, this is how we do this thing. Uh, okay, they are, they have mild intellectual uh, abnormality, but remember like they are infertile due to hypogonadism or hypospermia. So that's why guys, uh, what we have to give them, see they have less testosterone, you will give them testosterone, right? So one of the therapy is what we will refer them to endocrinologist, we give them testosterone and uh, because they are infertile, fertile, so we can refer them to infertility specialist right so this is how uh, Turner syndrome and down syndrome they look like uh, okay other than that guys there is a lot of syndromes there is uh, um, a Noonan syndrome there is a D George syndrome there is prader willi syndrome there is Angelman syndrome there is vectoral association there is cash 22 there is a lot of conditions of course we cannot cover all of them uh, all together or like in one lecture or you even in multiple lectures right but uh, the important things you have to uh, remember is like down syndrome is very 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 important and that's why uh, I talk about down syndrome um, Turner syndrome is important okay but the most important thing is down syndrome especially and not all the pediatrics books like I'm not talking about the textbook but like the m multiple books which are available not all the books are going to talk about all the conditions, okay? Uh, because uh, you should know the basics. So that's the basic thing. So anyhow, like uh, you can see, like what is Noonan syndrome? If you if you're interested, what is Williams syndrome or all the syndromes? You know, uh, of course, like uh, it's very hard to remember all the characteristic facies of all the syndromes, uh, all the abnormalities of all the syndromes. Yeah, but it is important to remember about the down syndrome okay and never forget that uh, like the features of down syndrome they have an increased risk of alzheimer leukemias and all this stuff and nowadays you know they are uh, there is genetic therapies are uh, they are discovering that the researches are going on and uh, even nowadays they by genetic therapy they are uh, trying to repair the uh, repair the genes okay uh, but uh, still like the, that is under development and most of the genetic conditions you know we cannot do much to them but uh, of course like we can um, let them to uh, fit in the society um, better plus uh, there are genetic services in developed world like in UK in USA uh, and in Arab like you can say the rich countries simply uh, Europe all over Europe you can say uh, the genetic services are basically given um, like if someone is carrying any uh, type of genetic error in their genes so uh, before marriage or before having offspring you know 
they can go for genetic counseling they can get their genes checked for the common type of conditions like uh, um, thalassemias and all this stuff and uh, as i told you like for down syndrome there is a screening is available and uh, that's a very good way uh, by screening they can simply um, uh, tell uh, if there is any abnormalities there or not so that's about uh, um, all the syndromes um, this is like the photographs for amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling uh, when the screening test come back positive so we can take a, a small part from the placenta and send it for the genetic studies um, one of the thing you know which I used a lot we call it as inborn error of metabolism or uh, you can say metabolic diseases uh, by the way like we I'm not going to take a lot of time on this one rather it's just uh, a very simple type of explanation uh, I told you most of the metabolic disorders are what they are autosomal recessive type of conditions right they are autosomal recessive type of conditions so uh, now the problem is what that uh, uh, you know when uh, I was talking about heel prick test right whenever the babies are born they do a heel prick test and in a heel prick test they, they look for the most common type of things like galactosemia cystic fibrosis and stuff like this uh, inborn error of metabolism or metabolic uh, or metabolic diseases are basically what happens is uh, because like they, they're born with this thing so of course like they are deficient in some of the um, enzyme you can say and when they are deficient in one of the enzyme um, of course uh, a simple concept if a like a product a in the body is uh, um, changing into product B right and the thing which is basically changing product A to product B is a uh, enzyme which is C enzyme C now for example this enzyme is the one which is deficient okay what is it deficient this enzyme is deficient so what will happen number one product B will not be formed okay number second product A will be accumulated right so what is going on is all the functions which this one is doing they will be missing and uh, this thing which is accumulating in the body it will cause some sort of toxicity right so this is the main concept about the metabolic conditions now uh, I will give you the example of one condition which I think I named many times but I never explain it uh, what you can say what are the metabolic disorders uh, now uh, to understand this thing you must know what kind of metabolic cycles are there in the body for example one is you know amino acid disorders okay then there is carpo hydrate disorders then there is fatty acid disorders and uh, okay these are the three main kinds you can say now for example I will tell you the name of uh, amino amino acid disorders like okay there is something called as phenylketonuria there is something called as tyro tyro Synemia. There is something something called as homocysteine urea. Okay, there is something called as alkaptone urea. Okay. Carbohydrate disorders. I will name few. For example, there is galacto. Um, okay, and anyone who have done biochemistry in a very nice way. After metabolism, uh, 
I don't know about other books, but I know about Lippincott. They talk about a lot of diseases of uh, amino acid disorders or uh, uh, carbohydrate acid dis uh, carbohydrate uh, disorders. Like uh, if you have done, you will know what I'm talking about. Von Gerke's disease. Uh, if you have biochemistry books, guys, you can open that and you will see. For example, MacArdle disease. So they are written in your Lippincott, right? And they will explain, you know, what, what when they occur in all this one. Uh, so there are many fatty acid disorders as well. For example, carnitine deficiency. Okay. So simply, uh, uh, all these things, you know, uh, they are they occur due to some sort of enzymatic disorder right uh, so uh, simply uh, what's going on is uh, uh, you can say uh, whenever there is any metabolic disorder what will happen like there will be some clinical manifestations like uh, in amino acid disorders like when there is for, for example tyrosinemia so see the tyrosine will be too much in the blood or homocysteine urea, like it will be present in the urine, or alkaptone urea, it will be present in the urine, right? So, of course, like there will be some neurological manifestations because, you know, neurologically, uh, they are very important for the development. So, and of course, there will be the features due to accumulation of all these things in the blood. For example, um, the patients of amino acid disorders, they will present with irritability, lethargy, poor feeding, seizures, vomiting, and uh, now these things which which are accumulating in their blood they smell they will give some different smell to the urine or to their breath for example okay and there will be some features like we will see clinically uh, on examination we will found like maybe they have dark urine maybe they have a different type of smell in the urine maybe they have hypotonia hypotonia or things like this same like with carbo uh, carbohydrate disorders uh, now, carbohydrate disorders mostly give cataracts, mostly give uh, growth retardation, mostly give failure to thrive, muscle weakness. Fatty acid disorders, the same thing, neurological problems um, as well as uh, fatty acid deposition in different parts of the body like hepatomegaly can be there. So like this is like just, you know, so simply whenever we are suspecting someone with any kind of uh, metabolic disorder we uh, go for you can say all the analysis of the urine of the blood glucose and all these things right so uh, you can have a very good idea about all these conditions you can say um, if you will go and you will uh, see the lipid cord uh, this one you know phenyl ketone urea now uh, Phenylketonuria, it's again autosomal recessive disorder, right? Uh, now, what happens in these patients, uh, like they have a deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase. Phenylalanine hydroxylase. So, this phenylalanine hydroxylase prevents the conversion of uh, phenylketonuria, phenyl phenylalanine to tyrosine. So, see, in, in PKU, Product A is phenylalanine, product B is tyrosine, and what is missing? Phenylalanine hydroxylase. So, this tyrosine will not form, and this phenylalanine will be too much in the blood that it will sp start starting appearing in the urine. We call it as phenylketonuria. Okay, now the toxic thing which is developing in the body is what? Tyrosine, tyrosinemia. Now, the babies they are normal at birth, but then they started developing musty type of smell. They have eczema, they have hypertonia, they have tremors, they have mental retardation. Now, because their tyrosine, uh, sorry, tyrosinemia has a different condition which tyrosine will be there. So what is not forming in these patients? Tyrosine is a product B, tyrosine is not there. So now if you know that tyrosine is the one which is needed for the coloration of the body, melanin and all this stuff. So these are the patients with phenylketonuria they have hypopigmentation their their hairs their eyes are blue their hairs are white their skin is white right so this is this thing 
what we can do to treat them. Of course, what is the thing which they cannot convert phenylalanine to tyrosine? So restrict phenylalanine. Provide what? Provide tyrosine. Simply, what is not converted? Phenylalanine. Restrict that. Okay. So within the start of the condition, restrict phenylalanine. What we should provide them? We should provide them with what? Tyrosine. It's very simple. Uh, I will just, so one of the condition I told you is galactosemia, right? Gal galactosemia. Now, what is galactosemia? Again, it's an autosomal recessive disorder. I told you most of the metabolic are autosomal recessive disorder. Now, most commonly, it occurs due to the deficiency of, deficiency of galactose 1 phosphate uridyl transferase now this is the enzyme which is needed to process lactose or galactose so you can say lactose or galactose are not processed okay now how they present they present with liver and renal failure liver and renal failure as well as they present with joinders they present with failure to thrive they have cataracts okay why because whenever they are going to take lactose or galactose they cannot be processed so they will be acc accumulated in the body what should be the treatment eliminate galactose from their diet this is the only treatment okay we have to provide so simply yeah, they cannot take milk they cannot take dairy products and so when they we, they cannot take that so we can feed them on soya soy based diet we can get them okay so this is like how the things uh, thing things uh, are we deal like with the metabolic type of disorders so thank you so much guys for listening and I will see you in the next lecture.